Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Laura Lee Cat's Pajamas palette, finally. I know some of you have been looking forward to this review, so I'm going to do it. I actually, to be completely transparent, I ordered this palette in part because I wanted to review it for my channel. And also because these are the colors I tend to go for in general. I'm kind of an enthusiast of like red eyeshadows and you know, I just kind of had to see for myself what it was like. Okay, so the reason it took me a while to get this up, I did receive it last week. I was hoping I was gonna get it before I went out of town. I literally got it the day I left. So I just brought all my filming equipment with me. I've been testing it out and now I'm finally getting the review up. It did take me a few days. I didn't wanna do a first impression and I thought, you know, I could use it for a couple days and I'd be like, okay, I know what I'm gonna say in my review. Let's just do this. But that was not the case. I didn't really feel comfortable doing a review until I'd had some more time to form an opinion on it. So we are here now. And by the way, that's why my background's different because I am out of town. <laughs> Hope the lighting's okay because this is not a room I normally film in and I just am doing my best, I'm doing my best. This palette is currently sold out. It did sell out within the weekend of its release. Um, it retails for $40. It does have like a good blend of shades. It has some light ones, it has a black, which is good. I love that, you know, it has a black in here. The black, however, does have some kind of micro glitter in it, which I just don't think needs to be there because it doesn't come off on the eye. So honestly, anytime a brand like infuses their matte shadow with some kind of micro shimmer. Generally speaking, I just use this black as a matte black. Well, let's start with the pros of the palette. So the pro that I'm obviously gonna say is the color scheme. I really like reds. I like warm camely browns. I love colors like that. So obviously this is gonna be up my alley in terms of the color scheme. I'm, I'm all there. Another pro I think is that there is a good mix of matte and shimmers. If you notice, like I said, I'm gonna consider this a matte because the shimmer in it just doesn't come off on my eyes. It just doesn't really do anything for me. So I'm gonna consider this a matte in terms of there are half matte half shimmer if you're going to consider this a matte which I do but that's just me they do have quite a bit of pigment in them especially these I really like these the white has more pigment in it than I originally thought it's not the best matte white on the market but you know this one right here it's kind of dusty and kind of chalky it doesn't tend to want to hold together very well but I will give you a tip on that here in a minute if you're interested same with this one so these two shades right here they just don't really wanna to hold together. They're not a smooth, shimmery, foiled shade like you would think they would be just from first glance. These three, however, are that very smooth, creamy, as much as I hate that word, um, formula that you would think of when you think of like shimmery shades like this. And you know, they swatch really well. They come out of the palette really well, really easily. Same with this one right here, this red cranberry shimmer shade. Arms get tired. The formula is not consistent throughout this palette, which here I'll turn it right side up too. Um, in my opinion, the formula is not consistent throughout the palette. And obviously the mattes and shimmers aren't gonna be the same in any palette really, but I think the shimmers aren't really the same in this palette. These two are pretty chalky. These three are really smooth. I don't know, anyway. Um, so my next con is going to be that they are almost too blendable especially these shades right here. If you try to blend them into one another, they're going to become one. They are not going to fade. And why, I don't know why you'd wanna do that with those two shades, because they're so similar anyway. But when you try to blend these in with other shadows in the palette, they can get really muddy, meaning they can start to kind of merge with the rest of the colors to where they're not each their own color anymore. You just have to be really careful when you're blending them. I think that these, like I said, these three can tend to muddy up. In fact, most of them in the palette, I think, can tend to muddy up on one another. I think that has to do with the fact that they are really blendable. I don't know, for me, I would say that that is a downfall of this palette because I don't want all of my shadows to kind of muddy up on one another. I want them to be a little bit easier to distinguish on the eye. On to the next con, which I maybe should have started with this, but the packaging. Like the outside, I don't really have an issue with. Like, I think it's good quality. It feels, you know, hefty. The palette is, you know, it's not my style really, but it's it's nice. I can see why people would like it. It's really sparkly, very sparkly. It also actually has, it took me forever to figure out what this was, but it has a cat with little paw prints running across the back. So I think that's kind of cute because but only thing is, it's just really hard to tell what it is. Maybe if this had been done in black, can't be a glare on it, or otherwise you can't really tell what it is. I'm just kind of picking at the packaging because I absolutely hate the inside of it. And like, 
Again, it's just not my style. Maybe some people would like it. Not only is it not my style, but it just looks cheap. Why in the world they would put a mirror here and then cover up most of it? I just don't get it. I don't understand why they wouldn't just make these smaller. It's almost like they ordered it and they messed up or something and these were supposed to be smaller and they got them and they were like, well, too late to fix it. It just looks really cheap because it looks like one print is just being repeated. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like a $40 palette is what I'm trying to say. If this were a little bit cheaper, okay, but it's $40. Anyway, I'm just gonna try and move on from that. Despite the fact that I do like this color scheme, it's been done a hundred times. That can be considered a downfall of just about any warm tone palette that's coming out. The Tartlet Toasted Palette, the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette, or maybe you are a fan of Laura Lee and you just want to have her palette because you, you know, have been a long time subscriber. You've been there from the beginning. You were kind of a part of the rise of this palette. So maybe that's why you want to have it. I mean, there are just a million shadows that look just like these. Now, that being said, now I'm just going to go into the top row and do some finger swatches real quick. As you can see, I'm just kind of swirling my finger around, not pressing too hard. Then I'm going to do some brush swatches. I'm using a Real Techniques flat shader brush, dry brush swatches for the mattes. And then I'm gonna go into the shimmers here and I'm using a wet brush to apply these. As you can see, that scatterbrain shade looks really cool when you apply it wet. It almost looks, well, it almost looks wet <laughs> when you use it wet. Um, in my opinion, it's really the only way to apply it if you really want it to show up on your eyelid. So I like that shade as long as um, it's used wet. I really like the way it looked on my inner corner. Same with Redonkulous. I like the way it looks when you apply it wet on the eye. Both of those shades, I don't think they apply very well dry on the eyelid. So next I'm just going to go in and do some finger swatches of the bottom row. Of course in one ear is by far the best on the bottom row here. As far as swatching goes, I'm going to do some wet brush swatches of the shimmers and I'm going to do a dry brush swatch of the mattes. In one ear looks amazing when you apply it with a wet brush as a swatch it looks almost like paint really have to build up that black doesn't bother me too much because it's a little bit easier to build up on the eyelid for whatever reason than it is for a swatch but that is them right here that's the bottom row let's go ahead and get to the demo and I'll go ahead and start by showing you the finished look that I came up with which is actually, I mean, I actually really like this look. I tried to use as many shadows as I could, and I actually, you know, I really like the look that I came up with. So I'm just starting by going in with that Bomb Diggity shade, and it's really the lightest transition shade in the palette for me. It's like that light camel brown, and as you can see, it blends really, really well. It blends really easily. Um, almost too easily, which is why they tend to kind of muddy up, in my opinion. Um, but aside from that, obviously, as you can see, it blends really well. So next I'm going to go in with a more pointed blending brush. This is the shade Cray Cray. It's that darker camel brown right next to Bomb Diggity. And again, blending really easily, almost too easily. Um, so I'm just kind of being very careful not to get it up too high and not to bring it past my crease because, like I said, they can kind of merge into one shadow if you're not too careful when you're blending these shades. So just making sure I keep that right in my crease there. And again, I didn't cut out any of the blending. I just sped it all up. I wanted you guys to see how um, much time it took me to blend it. So next I'm going in with Kooky. It's that matte burgundy shade. And again, using that pointed tapered blending brush, I just want to make sure I keep it right in my crease, like just not getting too far out because again, it will kind of muddy up. So you just have to be really careful when you're blending it not to overblend. So just keep that in mind. You don't necessarily have to overblend them. Just kind of prevent yourself from getting too muddy there. Just try and keep it concentrated as best you can. And that's what I'm doing right here. And I actually really like the way this is looking at this point. That looks like something I might just wear if I'm in a hurry. Throw on some mascara and yeah. I am a huge fan of the red eyeshadows, as I've said before. 
a thousand times. And then I'm gonna go in with Oddball. I'm gonna use a small blending brush. It's like a small pointed blending brush and I'm gonna put that matte black shade in my outer V and kind of get that into my crease, but I just gotta be very careful not to over blend it again. Now this shade's a little bit um, more difficult to work with than I would like. It is pretty pigmented, but as you can see, it's kind of skiffing on my eyelid, which isn't uncommon for matte shades. Like it's not like it's the first time it's ever happened, but it is kind of frustrating and you really just kind of have to be careful because you don't want to put too much there. You don't want to put too, put too little. You also want to try and get rid of that skipping there. And um, I did set my eye with that lightest shade before I even begin blending anything on top of it. So I just kind of had to work with that. And I'm just kind of shaping the outer corner with that black, as you can see. Took me a while to get it the way I wanted it, but I just kind of stuck with it and pressed on and, you know, I just didn't want to get it too muddied up. But I went back in with that larger blending brush to help me blend it out. So then next I'm going in with that quirky shade. It is one of the foiled burgundy shades. It's the one on the left. So this is obviously coming off really easily. I have a lot of fallout from that, which fallout doesn't necessarily bother me. I usually prepare for it whether I do my foundation after my eyes or whether I kind of put a heavy layer of powder beneath my eyes to catch it so that I can sweep it away. I'm just being very, very careful not to get those two shades mixed together because if I try and start going back and forth with them, it will get muddy really easily. So the, these aren't shadows that you really have to go back and forth with. So next I'm gonna go back into that bomb diggity shade, that first transition shade, and I'm just gonna blow that out messily under my lower lash line there. Just kind of making sure everything is shaped the way I want it to and kind of adding more transition into the top where it kind of faded away. Then I'm going in with my favorite shade in the palette. This is called In One Ear. This is that red, metallic shade and I am applying this dry so um, it is a very pigmented shadow I like the way it's applying it is more I don't know more pink maybe than you would think it would be um, but then I'm going back in with that quirky shade and I'm applying it wet just to kind of intensify that on my lid because it did kind of kind of lose some of its intensity after I blended over it and then I'm just going to put a quick wing on because this look seemed to call for it. And then I'm going into my inner corner with that scatterbrain shade and I have wet my brush. I like drenched my brush because I wanted this to look really wet. Every time I see that I want to call it splatterbrain. <laughs> but no. Anyway, scatterbrain, splatterbrain. Right on my inner corner there. All right guys, that is it for the demo and the review. So my verdict on the palette is, I don't hate it, I don't love it. I just think it's kind of meh. Like, I think it's okay. It's not terrible, it's not great. But those of you who I might recommend this to would be, for instance, people who are huge fans of Laura Lee's. If you've been following her for years and you were around from the beginning of her channel. If, however, you are somebody who already has all of these shades in your collection and you don't think you need more, especially with a formula that's a little bit tricky to work with, then this is not a palette that I would recommend to you. So, I mean, you know, it's okay, it's not great. I, I feel like it's not a popular opinion to have that you don't hate something or you don't absolutely love it here on YouTube, but that's just my opinion. That being said, you know, she sold out in like three days. So maybe I'm just have no idea what the f I'm talking about. Anyway, um, thanks for watching this review. I hope you find it helpful. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you want to, subscribe on your way out. And if you really liked this video, give it a thumbs up. I will see you guys next time. Peace out.